In this video, we're going to learn how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. So in this equation, we have x squared plus 13x plus 42 equals 0. We know we're solving a quadratic equation because our highest exponent is 2. So back in the day when we were solving linear equations, our goal would be to isolate x. Well, we can't exactly do that anymore because we have an x squared term and an x term that can't be combined. So either way, if I try to get x alone, it's, I'm still going to have another x that I have to deal with. So we have to use other methods. Um, and in this video, we're going to talk specifically about factoring. So before we actually try to solve this equation, we have to talk about something called the zero product property. So the zero product property says that if I take two factors, a and B, doesn't matter what they are, and I multiply them together to get zero, the only way for this to be a true statement is if A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero. So there are two possible combinations, in other words, that would give us a product of zero. This is important because whenever we solve quadratic equations by factoring, we always want it to be equal to zero so that I can apply the zero product property. So when we solve, step one is always going to be to get it equal to zero, which we have. So now, step two is I want to try to take my trinomial and rewrite it in factored form as my two binomials so that I can then figure out what each factor um, or what each value of x would have to be to make that factor zero. So step one, we get it equal to zero. Step two, we're now going to factor this. We know a quadratic trinomial factors into two binomials. And if you need a refresher about how to factor, you can always go watch those videos. Um, but our choice is here, plus 6 plus 7. So we know x times x is x squared. x times 7 is 7x. 6 times x is 6x, which combines to be 13x. 6 times 7 is 42. So I know I factored it correctly. Once we have it factored, we know, well, I'm taking two things. So I have this one factor times this other factor, I'm going to use different symbols, and I get zero. So if I take my box and multiply it by this bubble and get zero, that means either my box, which is x plus 6, has to be equal to zero, or my bubble, x plus 7, has to be equal to zero in order for this to give me to multiply two things and get zero. So if I solve each of these, this factor gives me an x value of negative 6, whereas our second factor gives me an x value of negative 7. So let me show you why these are the two possible solutions. If I take negative 6 and put it back into my equation right here, I would get negative 6 plus 6. Well, the box just ends up becoming 0. And then it doesn't even matter what the bubble is. If I do 0 times my bubble, I'm going to get 0, which is what I want. So that's how I know negative 6 works. The same thing with negative 7. When x is negative 7, my bubble becomes 0. So 0 times something, doesn't even matter what it is, is still going to give me 0 in the end. So my two solutions when solving this quadratic equation are negative 6 and negative 7. So now let's take a look at another example. So we have 72 equals 2x squared minus 10x. Step 1 says we have to have our equation equal to 0 so that we can apply that 0 product property. So I like to be positive. I like to always keep this a value positive. So I'm going to subtract 72 from both sides of our equation. And remember, we always want to put it in the right order. It always should be in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So now we're going to factor this. We always check for a GCF first, which there is one, x squared. So I'm going to factor out a 2. Whoa, 2, not an x squared, silly. And then. We can keep factoring this quadratic piece into our two binomials. Happens to factor into x minus 9 and x plus 4. So now that we're completely factored, again, we're going to set each factor equal to 0. Because I know if I multiply something by some other stuff and get 0, at least one of those factors has to be equal to 0. So I set 2 equal to 0. I set x minus 9 equal to 0 and I set x plus 4 equal to 0, my three different factors. Well, I'm going to solve each of these. Well, in this one, 2 equals 0, that doesn't give me a value of x to solve for. So there's no value to actually solve for here. But if I solve this second 
factor, add 9 to both sides, I get x equals 9. If I solve this last one, I get x equals negative 4. So my two answers would be 9 and negative 4. Let's do one last example. So in this last example, we have 5x squared equals negative 25x. Step 1 always says get our equation equal to 0. Well, I could either subtract 5x squared over to the right side, or I could add 25x to both sides to move it over here. Again, I like my a value to always be positive, so I'm going to keep it where it is so that it stays positive, and I'm going to add 25x to both sides to move everything over to the left. So now we have 5x squared plus 25x equals 0. Step 2 says to factor. Well, when we factor, we always check for a GCF first, which in this case, there is a GCF of 5x. So if I factor out of 5x, I'm left with x plus 5 equals 0. And I check to see if I can keep factoring, but this is a linear factor, this is a linear factor, so we're actually done factoring. I know it doesn't keep factoring any further because this x plus 5, there's nothing in common. It's not a quadratic, so we're kind of stuck at this point. So once it's factored, we set each factor equal to 0. If I have 5x equals 0, and then x plus 5, my other factor, equal to 0. When I solve both of these, I get x equals 0, and x equals negative 5. Which makes sense, because if x is 0, and I put a 0 in for x, this box becomes 0, and 0 times anything is going to give me 0. If I make x negative 5, well then my bubble becomes 0, and 0 times anything is still going to give me 0. So those are the three examples. I'm going to write out the steps on the next page, so that, um, or on the next screen, so that you can copy them down if you need to. Here are those steps.